Okay, people, what if you go back to lectures? Sad. All right, so, uh, yeah, so networks, right, more about networks. I'm going to talk, I'm going to finish small world networks today. Big story, huge thing. Uh, and then we'll talk about scale-free networks, which is this other gigantic piece, right? And you'll get to eat some food again, so it's not all lost, it's all right. Okay, uh, let's see, so the tweet situation, we've got a few more little pieces here. So Ebola, we're going to be talking about contagion, so in the class, but of course in the real world, that is what is being talked about all the time. Uh, there's some uh, work by, uh, so Vespignani is a quite a famous character in, in network science, he's a physicist, an Italian by origin, and he's now at uh, Northeastern, and one of his big um, contributions to everything is actually, okay, we made these fun models of disease spreading, and we'll talk about this a little bit, but they have gone and built a, you know, a very serious kind of enterprise trying to um, model disease spreading through, net, through uh, the airline networks, using actual data of how people move around, like how many flights there are per day, how many people, the kind of actual mixing that's going on. Um, I don't know about the resolution they have for cities, because then you have something else as well, but th these things have been simulated in various ways. Uh, anyway, you could, you could look these up. Uh, you know, there's this great question, I mean, what happens if you get rid of 90% of all plane flights? What if you stop all the flights coming out of Liberia, right? So the easy narrative is, Stop the flights coming out of Africa, you know, no, no flights from Africa to the US, and you see lots of calls for that, for example. And that's a very easy narrative to understand because it means, right, no one's going to, you know, there'll be no Ebola. But the more difficult narrative and, and the, the mechanics of what will probably happen is people will leave and, and go in different ways that are not being tracked and, and be, become more desperate and so on. So it can just, it can make things worse. You know, it's hard to model this, it's hard to tell that story. Um, you know, because the other story is so simple and we gravitate towards simple stories, especially if we're politicians um, or talk show people. Um, but that's so some of the work that Vespignani... So you can get to it through some of these links. But this is not a good um, uh, graph. That is not a good graph. Um, it's going up. So, okay, other things, you know, just to show you that where we are is good. So this is uh, Aaron Classet. This is uh, uh, Boulder. Nice place to live, um, by all accounts. And uh, so, there you go, hiring positions in network science, machine learning. Uh, so, you know, these things keep taking off. All right. Okay. Okay, okay. And I think I had... We don't need to worry about that. All right, so let's go back to this small worlds business. Are we good? I think we're good. Okay, so I showed you this, this app version of the paper, which is terrific, actually. This is the thing you should read. You can read, the paper is great as well, so you should read the paper. It's short, it's three or four pages, it's naturified, right? So it got you know, compressed, um, so it's quite terse. You definitely should read it. Um, but this is, a, this is the fun thing to play around with if you want to come back to it. Um, you know, you try and copy a picture out of nature and they do this to you. I can't get that stamp out of it. But let's recap the story, right? So. Uh, toy model, not a model of the real world. There was something involving crickets listening to each other and chirping, right? I mean, there were some inspirations about synchronization problems and what would happen if you put um, a synchronization model on a network and, and, and then these different classes of network. And if you think about it, the whole of network space, it's a big mess, right? So what this is, this little toy model, is a way of traversing, you know, you're going to follow a little path through network space and there are all these other ones you're going to ignore. And on one extreme, there are these regular lattices, and it's this kind of 1D version with where your friends know each other, right? So in this case, um, there's a ramification or an extra link between nodes that are two steps apart. And importantly, there's no, there's no indexing here, right? So this node doesn't know it's number three and doesn't know this one's number four or number five. As far as that node's concerned, they have these four friends in the world. That's it. They have four friends. And they, 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 know, they may know something about, you know, who their friends know, right? So they know that <coughs> these two friends are friends with each other. But that's all, they, that's all they know. So in terms of navigation, moving around on this thing, they don't have a map. They can't just Google for someone else. Um, <coughs> all right, so, uh, right, so the idea was, and as we explained, just to recap, so you take each link, you move around in one direction, you take uh, the one end of each link, and then with probably P, uh, randomly rewire it. So it's a bit different to picking the link up and rewiring both ends. You're just picking one end, which helps it 
um, not become disconnected. So it's, you know, that this is a, it's absolutely a cartoon toy model, right? We're just, we're just gonna get something to work. So this is somewhere in between, and then this is a fully, P equals one, this is, it's been randomized as much as it can. You can still, of course, it's been uh, arranged in a certain way, so it looks like <coughs> there might be some structure there. It doesn't give you a perfect random network that we talked about, these Poisson degree distribution networks, because of that tethering of one link, right? You're not, you're, you're allowing one, one end of each link to move, but, but not both. All right, even so, that's fine. This is pretty, pretty random. And we got this story that, yes, you have local clustering here. Here, generally, your friends don't know each other, so clustering has disappeared, right? So it's, this is not social in, in, in a local sense. This is what social in a local sense. Uh, but the, to get from one place to another, because of all these nice big random links, it's actually pretty easy, right? If you have a map. This one, if you want to get from this guy to this guy, you have to go hop, 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 hop. And, you know, you can jump two steps. But it's <coughs> going to be on the scale of the whole thing. All right, so small world geometrically, big world geometrically, non-social, social. And then uh, the story is as you dial P, this is a logarithmic scale, so this is, you know, I don't know what N is in this case from the original one off the top of my head, but this is, you know, 1 in 10,000, um, you know, P is 0.001. So that's a pretty low probability of rewiring and uh, all the way up to a complete rewiring. And so what's plotted uh, is the clustering, Again, this is a watt strogratz clustering, which is this local measure, divided by the clustering for zero, uh, for no rewiring at all. And this is the average shortest distance path length divided by the one that you get when there's no rewiring. So, so they're normalized, right? So both of these start at one. And this is a, uh, you know, a little bit of artifice here to put them on the same graph so you can see how they change. Shortest distance drops away as you rewire, right? So we get a small world. And here we have a social world until it falls apart here. This is not a social world anymore. But you get in the middle, and this is, this, this is a great observation, was that you can have, there, there are networks that have both of these properties. Right? So you know, to say it afterwards, it doesn't seem like a big deal. But this, this really took a long time to come to. And a lot of monks didn't, weren't even looking for it. They just sort of, you know, wandering around the bushes whacking away at random networks um, because they were delicious and fun to play with mathematically. Um, <coughs> when we talk, maybe I'll bring this up too, but uh, when we talk about scale-free networks, I'll talk about other uh, monks getting, you know, kind of excited about other things and missing, missing the thing in front of them. All right, so, uh, so 1998, it, it's, uh, it's now it has 25,000 citations. It's kind of a big deal. All right, so here's a, here's a bit of an issue with this, right? So uh, you think it's all done. <coughs> We've, we've figured out this great this Stanley Milgram thing as well. We've got a whole lot of things, right? We know how to, uh, we know what happens if we put crickets together and with little headphones. Um, <coughs> we know about disease spreading as well. Like, gives us some insight into disease spreading because this, you know, this is a, disease is not going to spread that badly here. Messages, information, what other, you know, other things, that, you know, fear, right? Um, but it's got, it's, it gets a big jump here because, you know, you start talking about, um, you know, there's Ebola in my cereal, and you know that you you tweet it right, and your friend on the other side of the world is like, oh my god, it's unbelievable. Um, it's America, so I'm, I'm sure it's true. And then, <coughs> you know, in this one, it's like it's just complete madness. All right, so things spread very quickly over here. Right. Um, so when we go to the Milgram story, that was all about navigation. How do you find your way around? Uh, in, in that case, social. Networks, but also you can think about information networks. How do you store things? How do you navigate your way around? We have this nice work on the Wikipedia, for example, which is sort of, you know a, a part of that. Like, how do you navigate through knowledge space? What happens if you navigate in certain ways? You give yourself a certain algorithm, a certain method for doing it, and you do. You know, if you're trying to find a distant place, you know, you need some pretty good simple algorithm. A lot of people are going to be doing this. You know, we talked about the red balloons thing and maybe creating social movements and, and of course, marketers want to do this for evil purposes. Um, no, no, it's all good, right? Uh, you know, Facebook wants to do certain things to make you come back and buy things and, you know. All right, so, okay. So it turns out that the short, these shortcuts, which really drive the whole thing, they're not findable, right? They're not, fi for a large enough network, they're, they're not findable. These things aren't navigable. You don't, it, is, it has these small world properties, which are geometric. There's social, there's clustering, 
and it's small in the sense that the average path length is small, so you aren't many hops away from anywhere. But as this thing grows, these, kind of, these networks grow and grow, your ability to find them, to navigate around, goes to, to zero, right? And we can quantify exactly how that is. But you have to think about, well, what map do they have in front of them? Again, none, none of the smartphone things, not allowed to have them. Um, not allowed to ask Google. You just have to ask your friends, right? Do you, like, I'm trying to find this person. Do you know that person? That's the sort of thing you can say. And so there's no sense, really, um, especially you know, here, like, no one knows if someone is closer to anyone else because they don't have, there's no underlying grid, there's no map. You just know your friends' identities or you know, who that you know your friends. And if you say, do you know, you know Barack Obama or you know, the um, Queen of England, then they, they will probably just say no. But maybe one of them will say, well, I, know, you know, I have a friend in Yorkshire. Does that help? You know, you know, probably not. Um, uh, and, and, you know, and so then you might do something with it. But it's pretty messy, right? So that's, that's, we'll get to this later on, the identity story. So there's no map. There's no way to get around this. Uh, the, these, these structures, right? So you, you can't find, the nodes can't send messages quickly using a locally informed um, algorithm, right? So it has to be based on local, inf that's the constraint we're putting in, local information. You don't have a map. And, you know, we're inspired to, to see if we can do this with, with at least models and so on because this seems to happen in the real world for people and it has all these implications as to, you know, spreading information, gathering things together. Um, so, uh, Kleinberg showed this actually, we'll come back to this, he showed that this was an issue. Uh, so what can you use to do this navigation, if, we, if we're going to say it's going to be local? So again, think of the Milgram experiment, not the other one with the zapping, but the one where uh, you're sending messages, you have this nice thing, and you know the target person, right? You have their name, you have uh, where they live, you have their job, so you have these things to go on, and you have to choose from people you know, right? Whom you know, which one you would send it on to. Um, so no map. Um, unfortunate thing happened to a rodent. Um, so uh, you need some measure of distance somehow. So okay, um, <coughs> let's say a weasel. All right. So uh, you need some measure of distance between your friends and the target. Somehow you have to measure that. You have to right. You need something like that. You need some kind of metric or just a, some sort of distance. So you can say, oh, this one is closer. Uh, so there are a couple of pieces we have in here, uh, identity, the, the identity of the target, the, how many friends your friends have, that could help, you, know, you send it to your most popular friend. Of course, the identities of your friends, um, and where the message has been, because the message has come to you, right, so it's, it's, it can have things added to it, that's fine. You can say, oh, it's passed through these people. So that stops you from sending it back, which is good. Um, Inscrutable note that I will not understand later on. Okay, good. <coughs> At least I'm honest. Okay. Uh, so let's see. So Climax, so this is 2000. Navigation of small world. It's one page, uh, appeared in Nature. And very, very clever thing. So he realized that this work was actually just geometric, right? This, this work by Watson Strogratz was a, had, had uncovered this really interesting, but just still geometric property of a particular class of networks, that they could be small, um, and still social, right? So that's geometric. But he's, he points out that, uh, you know, in this work, that, that uh, they're not navigable. And so he introduces this, this frame, which was always there, but puts a good handle on it. So, in fact, introduces another toy model where there are two pieces. Now there's the network structure can vary, which is what we had before, but it's going to be a different kind of set of networks, uh, and, the, and the search algorithm. So this is the, right now we're kind of in the right space, right? So we're going to have a local search algorithm that can be tuned in different ways. Um, you know, you can, how, how you behave depending on where it's been, how many of your friends your friends have, and so on. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, and the network structure. Okay, so, so a very different kind of network. So these are going to be d-dimensional cubic lattices, right? So this is, okay, fine. So, the, so in two dimensions, right, we just have a, a sort of business. I kind of had a picture like that before. And so you'll have a, uh, the start and the target person, and they have to navigate, all right? And because we can, uh, we might as well do it in um, arbitrary dimensions, which is what he did, all right? Which is, which is, might sound a little scary, but it's fine because, you know, information space is very, very large, right? dimensionally speaking. 
Um, <coughs> all right. So d-dimensional cubic lattice, and so that's so that's a start, but it's it's not uh, very very good yet. So we're gonna. So his his algorithm was to add some links. So again, this is Watson Schroeder. It's like add links on top that are these shortcut type links. The the example I showed you last week of the, where we added random links, they're absolutely random, right? They're just random. You pick a one node and another node at random and then connect them. They are, so they are global in the sense that's a global scale, right? Lots of local local connections in here, through local structure, and then random things were put on top. Now, that's going to be tuned away um, from, from this kind of global adding, or this global scale. Okay, so two things. First is to ramify or reinforce the local neighborhood. So around each node, you have a distance Q, this is not quite right, and you just add links to everyone who's in that little um, net around, or that little box around you. Right, so you, you reinforce that. So that gives it, that gives you this socialness, right? So again, very much like the watson Strogatz thing. And then we're gonna add M shortcuts. I'm not gonna go into all the math behind this, we'll I, I wanna just explain how this, this worked. Um, a little bit of show and tell, I suppose. Uh, and so we'll connect these two nodes, I and J, with probability, and it will depend on, so X here is the distance between them. I think I might make that a D. Uh, the distance between them to a minus alpha. So there's a power, right? So it's, it's decaying. Alpha is greater than zero. It's decaying, so the likelihood of connecting two nodes that are further away goes down. Um, there are, of course, more nodes that, as you go away from you, there are more nodes, right? So in two dimensions, the number of nodes that are a distance r grows like r, because it's going like 2 pi r. In three dimensions, it grows like r squared, the surface of a ball around you. Right? So there are more nodes further away from you. Um, <coughs> OK, so we got two, th two things. So it's a, it's a simple lattice. You reinforce it so we get some local structure in there. So this should look like the watts strogatz one. And then we're going to add these other links. But we're not just going to add them randomly. We're going to have this tunable parameter. So this is the tunable aspect of these, of these networks, right? So we have this dial. So at one extreme, alpha equals 0. So alpha equals 0, the probability of connecting is it's 1. It's proportional. You just normalize it, right? There's nothing special about i and j. So you're just going to throw random links down. Okay, so at that limit, that's what you're doing. When alpha is, sorry, alpha is large, um, then this is decaying very fast. So large, you know, the further away, the much, much less likely chance that you will connect. So you're actually just reinforcing the local connections. Right, so you have this nice thing. You can dial between random scatter of links to uh, reinforcing it really strongly. Okay, so very local, very global. So this is, this is the what Strogatz thing, and now we've got a model that allows us to tune in between these pieces. All right, <coughs> sorry. Um, and alpha equals d, uh, you have to think about this a little bit, but alpha equals d, where d is the dimension, two, three, four, uh, that means that you have your connections growing logarithmically in space. So, get it right. So the number of connections, I may have this wrong off my top of my head, but if you double the, the distance away from you and you double that distance again away from you, you have the same number of, I think this is roughly right, you have the same number of connections here in this section as you do in here, as you do in here. So it's kind of a nice Goldilocks story, right? The, the, this is the one that's just, just right kind of thing. You, you, you're not favoring local links too much. You're not favoring links further away too much. You're kind of giving everyone... There's, there's a uniformity to it. Right. How are we doing? So these are these three limits, and of course, or three examples, these are limits, and then there's this sort of special case in between. So when alpha goes below D, then you're starting to be more local. When alpha is greater than D, you're starting to make your links further and further away. <coughs> Just 20 minutes, people. Uh, so, a lot of work by this, this, this very clever fellow, it was John Kleinberg, uh, and it's, it's a kind of computer science proof thing, not the most elegant looking stuff, lots of analysis and horrible things. Uh, but generally speaking, I think. So greedy algorithm. 
Very good, right? So just send it to, so this, you know, after all this work, it should, this should make sense. So send it to your friend, send this message to your friend who is the most close in terms of distance to the target. Very simple. So that comes out though, that's good. I mean, and, and from what I recall, you know, he allowed every possible, you know, somehow managed to allow every possible algorithm you could think of based on um, just this local information. So you know who your friends are, right? you know, let me, let me say something else that's not clear here, I suppose. Here's the big departure from the Watts and um, Strogatz mo model. Is there a coordinate? This, this one has underlying coordinates. <coughs> so if you're, you're this person here, you know you're at two and zero. You know where you are. So you, everything is, every individual in these networks is defined by their location. So if you're told to send it off to the target, um, yeah, to send it, send it off to a target person, you know, you're at two and three, and your target person is, at, I don't know, let's say seven and eight, you know, you, you know you can just step it this way, right? That, that's going to work. You actually know where they are. You, really, you do have an underlying map. So that's, that's a big departure. Uh, and if you have a friend who's here, you'll know to send it to them. They're closer than all of your other friends. If you're, all your other friends are just here, you'll definitely send it to them. You, you, you know that they are closer. I mean, it's a simple measure. All right. Okay, that's a very important piece that I didn't say. Um, <coughs> it turns out this kind of just right allocation of links <coughs> is the right thing, right? And it's a kind of social golf, right? So in the sense that you have the ability to send, you have connections at all scales. So it's one of these kind of nice scaling stories. Again, you have connections at all scales. You can access someone who's farther, you know, a long distance away. No one is, uh, on average, you know, inhibited from doing that. On average, on average, everyone has the ability to send at all scales. So that's really the, the upshot of that. So it's a very nice, clean result. A little bit nasty to look through, but um, but really well done. Okay, so that was good. Now, the problem is, and I'll say this again, the problem is, of course, that coordinates have been introduced. Right? So if you have a, a network where um, you don't have any of these long links, alpha equals in, you know, is, is very large, right? you don't, you've just reinforced these local links, then you can use your putter and just go boink, 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 and just push it along, push it along, push it along. Golf. You can push it along. Ooh, golf stick. Um, you can push along to the person, you know, push it in that direction, just boom, 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 right? And if you have, um, and if you have giant links, you kind of need to do that as well, right? You might get, you might, you, you're allowed <coughs> to pull out your, your, your wood and go push, and, and you'll get it close, but then no one has a, any, you know, the short game's no good, right? So they can't, you, the next thing you could do, you know, you get close to the, the target, all they have are some local links, which help because they'll, they'll use them, and then some long links, and that's no good. All random, large links, okay? Social golf, all right. <coughs> uh, there are some good details here. So what does it mean that it's a small world? Well, th there's some characteristic size of these things, right, the number of the population. <coughs> so it's growing slowly. The search time, the average search time grows most slowly when links are allocated in this scale free, or this scale ind roughly scale independent way, and they, they uh, it grows slowly with system size. It's not zero, so that's a that's another attribute here that we we kind of will use later on. Is this slow growth with time? So it's logarithmic, log squared. That's great. That's totally fine. And as you move away from alpha, so much excitement. As you move away from alpha equals d, it becomes you get an algebraic term in there. It's, it starts to get nasty, right? This will pop. There'll be an end to some power here, and that's not as nice. <coughs> All right, so of course social networks don't look like this. You don't have an underlying map in the same way. I mean, this is a very structured thing. The, the big contribution here was to introduce um, <coughs> navigation as, as, you know, as, as the, uh, an what's the algorithm, what, what kind of algorithms work on what kinds of networks, right? So some networks will simply be unnavigable regardless of the local algorithm you, you choose. I mean, that's, that's possible. Uh, this is a broad family of networks that he could search through with a broad family of uh, algorithms. 
pretty nice. All right, so just to show you that's 2000, these are papers that are appearing you know, more recently. Good fun, right? So this is, a, this is navigation, uh, navigation on a Sierpinski gasket. I mean, of course, why not? Let's do it. Um, and uh, you know, this, is, this is really getting at it properly, looking at the asymptotic results. These treatments are more in the physics realm and they are a bit simpler and more concise and so on, so they work out. All right, very nice. <coughs> okay, so there's also, uh, so uh, Lada Adamic, who moved from Michigan to Facebook, I think. Um, I think she's still, she really is at Facebook, yep. Uh, so, she's done lots of interesting things. So, there's a, one of her early pieces was showing that you can search networks well if they have hubs, and so that's our next uh, body of work, this scale-free networks business. But if they have probably distributions for their degree that decay, you like these guys, k to the minus gamma, right, the sum exponent, yeah. We will have more problems about this, which is great. Um, so, <coughs> okay, k is the degree, yeah, this whole business. These are, these are okay. These aren't, you can search fairly well, right? Uh, and, and the sort of thing you do is you get to the hub, which makes sense. So your algorithm there is different. You, you, Go to your most connected friend, then your most connected friend, your most connected friend. And that will work if you have a nice, if you do have really pronounced hubs. So the, you know, the most extreme version is just a star network. There's one person who knows everyone, and then everyone else is just friends with that person, and you just send a message to the, the middle. And that person's like, great, another message. You know, they explode, right? So, um, <coughs> and of course, the airline network is an effort to, to, to structure that. We still hate them. Um, <coughs> hubs in social networks are limited in real social networks. In real social networks. People get excited about this. They think that every network in the world has this distribution for its degree. It's not true. Uh, you know, you don't have, right? So wealth distributions, right? Where Bill Gates has, whatever, $80 billion or something like this. Um, so that's, you know, that's more than, that's, a, that's many orders of magnitude, more than the people have released. Uh, you don't have 80 billion friends. You know, or, or a million <coughs> friends, or a hundred million friends. You can have that many followers on Twitter if you're Lady Gaga. Is it Lady Gaga? Who tragically is number one. No, it's Katy Perry. It's Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, universe. Yeah. Yeah, last time I looked, I think it's uh, Obama's like three, and then it's, you know, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga. I think YouTube is number nine, too. Like, so there's these things on Instagram. Instagram is up there as well. It's like, okay. Um, so they've, they've, they've really risen, they're new, they're relatively new newcomers. Oh yeah, who was it? Um, Ashton Kutcher, he was, early on, he was ascendant. Mm, not so much. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's lost it. In fact, he may have had to turn it off because of some indiscretions. Is that true? I think he's I don't know. I, yeah, stupid's a good way to say it. Um, I, yeah, I'm sure I read that in People magazine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, People Magazine Physics today. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Basically the same thing. All right, so let's see. Um, hubs and social networks, real social networks are limited, right? So you, I'm sure you have, so there is this odd thing we'll come to later on, which is very disappointing, that your friends have more friends than you on average. And in fact, I think I wrote a condition down yesterday, which is, which, 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 which um, you know, if you, if you kind of work it out for any attribute, right? So it could be wealth, it could be number of, um, uh, well, I wonder if it's like number of cats you own. That's interesting. Um, all sorts of odd things, you know, any attribute of someone. Do they on average, do your friends on average have more of it than you? Which kind of builds in a keeping up with the Joneses principle just into social networks because on average you see everyone's got a little bit more. So, you know, um, depends how you respond to it. But that's an interesting thing. Anyway, so... It's to I consider friends, don't necessarily consider me a friend. Oh, that's a problem too. That's another issue. Yeah, yeah. So if you ever have a, there are, there are, there are um, studies of this where, you know, you get people to rank other people or, or, or they're ranked in terms of, you know, act by, you know, actually asking them or by looking at whom they reply to the most and so on. And it's never, it's not, it's not a good picture. Yeah. Your number one friend is, it's, it's, you know, your 13th on their list, your first, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, that might be built in too. 
oh, there's lots of weird, uh, weird. I mean, there's pitch changes, the way people talk to each other, which, which has been really you know, proven very, because you, you mic people up and then you throw away all the data. I mean, this is just, this is just like, yeah, you get rid of that and just you know, do some Fourier analysis or so on. Just pull out some really basic things. So you've just got pitch and you can see some people never really change and other people move to them. Um, there are all sorts of things with pronouns, right? So that people who are talking to someone more above them in power will use I much more and that person will use it much less. Uh, but then in turn, if they go around and talk, that person talks to someone who's more powerful than them, whatever power means to them, but you know, if, if they can perceive that person to be more powerful, then they, their eyes go up. I, I, I. Anyway, lots of funny little things like that. I don't know how we got to that, but anyway, okay. Like your friends always have more, like, they're, they're better than you now. Well, no, so, they, so, so, so there, there will be some things that, that that's true, and then some things that's not true. This yeah. idea that, like, there's that one person that's the archetype and, and has every quality in abundance, and they're friends with everybody, is that, and then, you know, like, they're the epicenter of everything. You see what I'm getting at? Like, and then, like, all of a sudden, everybody looks to them. Yeah. They're out, this one person just... Well, you know, so that them. does work for... for um, with, with media, of course, because you see with celebrities, right? I mean, you can, a lot of people are looking, if they spend too much time, because it's also weighted, right? How much time you spend thinking about your friends? So if you're thinking about Katy Perry all the time and kind of making all this <coughs> calculus about what she has versus, you know, right? <laughs> then, then, you know, that, that, that can make you, so there's a weighting problem. But if you just weight everyone evenly, that's a different yeah. game as well. And you know, from an actual real social network where you know other humans, ones you talk to, um, where it's reciprocated. Because as soon as you say reciprocation, they, they, these people know each other, then all of those, you know, people with hundreds of millions of friends disappear, right? I mean, you know, they become normal, yeah. Uh, that's what this, uh, okay, that's what we're talking about here. There, there, are, there are odd properties, but, but that's, and we'll come to that later. It's very important for contagion, actually. <coughs> Right? Because if your friends have more friends than you, and, you know, you're, you know, you're, I, I, I kind of enjoy, but if you've got some horrible lurgy, let's not say Ebola, you've got some horrible lurgy and you, you know, you go and give it to your friend, that's a goon's reference, which is lurgy, the dreaded lurgy. Okay. <laughs> the goons? No? This is, um, this is pre-Monty Python. Oh, okay, so, um. Uh, Peter Sellers, Peter Sellers, Pink Panther, yeah, I mean, this is a long time ago, it's true, yeah. um, and probably be arrested for the things they said, but they were quite funny. Um, uh, let's see, so, uh, yeah, the dreaded logo, yeah, right, so you, you, you pass this on to someone else, but they have more friends than you, that's Pat, right, yeah. Um, of course, if you pass it on to someone who has a million friends and they see them all the time, very bad situation. So if you do have hubs. So, you know, if you send a tweet and Katy Perry retweets it, that's some, some power. If you have influence over Katy Perry, that's a different question. All right, so this is, this is, this makes, so these kind of networks are navigable in a certain sort of way, but you can see immediately these hubs are going to get exploded. I mean, again, just think of Ellen's, right? So, yeah, and the, the various tragedies that I'm sure have befallen you at some point in your Experiences traveling around on planes. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. All right. So, the last piece for, for this will be generalized <coughs> affiliation networks. And, you know, it taps, it, 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 it touches on a lot of sociological theory and I, I would think common sense sort of notions of, of social phenomena. And you can <coughs> imagine building these things in lots of different ways. But I'll give you a particular stylized version that we, we constructed. So, um, it's a paper that appeared in Science in 2002. Okay. Uh, all right. So we have no hubs. So we're not going to have that. That's that's kind of cheating. And there's no underlying lattice. You don't have a map. No Google thing. So how do you how does A figure out that B is you know which which of their friends and they have all these other friends over here? How do they figure out that this is a good place to send their message first? How do they do that, right? So what does close mean? What's social <coughs> distance? Um, so identity, right? So, so let's think about it in terms of identity and we'll make a stylized model of this and it's the right, not the right, no, it is, it's, it's the right way to think about it. Um, there's, so let me say, there's a lot, there was a lot of preoccupation with trying to create 
a network that looked like a social network with just sort of an algorithm that just builds it, which we'll do again for scale-free networks. But that's not really right. We'll see, we'll see why that is here. So it's a very functional notion of identity we'll talk about. It's where you live. It's the job you have. It's, you know, if you, if you have religious, you know, it's the places you go, if you play sports or um, trivia <coughs> nights and things like that, you know, that brings humans together <coughs> over very important things. Um, and then groups, for example, uh, and people are, you know, in bottled environments like this, um, <laughs> with, through suffering, they, they form a group. Um, so, so we're going to say, we're going to say, for this sake of this model, that they have one similar attribute, which is that they went through this hellish class together. Okay. Uh, for example, right? <coughs> but of course, you know that that physical problem is is that uh, you're also in the same place. So there's also other pieces that are going to add. And typically, you know, people become friends, you know, it's easier for them to become friends the more things they have lined up to start with, you know. Of course, you uncover the deeper things later, and that, that can be the, like, that's when, yeah, it's not going to work out. Um, we're tricky like that. Okay, so then we have this really nice interplay, though. You have your, attri your personal attributes, which is sort of your, you know, your identity, this functional thing, like what you do, um, that, they, that brings you into certain contexts repeatedly, right? Um, like here, that gives you, uh, gives rise to interactions, and then net networks are manifested out of that, right? So this is a way of thinking of the networks, you know, being this kind of epi, epi phenomena, really, that the context are driving everything. Uh, and this goes back and forth, right? So you meet people, and they have some other attributes, and then you start maybe, you maybe, you know, um, you get involved with them in some way, and you go off to their, you know, these other contexts that you haven't been supposed to be for, so there's this all this interplay back and forth. And, you're, and then your functional identity <coughs> changes as well. All right, so bipartite affiliation networks, you know, I, I get this, so this is another lifting away from random networks, which is really quite powerful. I mean, even random bipartite affiliation networks are terrific things to, to think about. So we have context, right? So this could be, um, you know, classes that you're in, right? All the suffering. Yeah. <coughs> And then uh, these are the individuals, so they, you know, these people share these different contexts, and that gives rise potentially to, to interactions. So in this case, we'll just say that if, you're in the, if you share a context, one context, then you're friends, right, that you've connected. So A and B are connected, because they're in context one. B and C share something, it's three, you can, you can look at it from this point of view. So there's no network here, right? right? There's no network drawn in here, there's no network between the contexts, but there is a... Either way, you project what we'll say a bipartite affiliation one, you project to a unipartite network, which is just really, do we need to say that? Anyway, okay, these are words that you, you might see. You can project this way too, so which, which contexts are connected to each other, right? So one and two, they, they have an overlap. And so this is actually, you know, this is quite important to think about. It's, it's, it's easier to think about this because we're people, but these more amorphous, Stranger groups, you know, groups are hard for us to understand. I mean, boards of directors, for example, right? So you have, you know, McDonald's and, I don't know, some completely different thing, you know, da da da, -da. Um, that you, you may have people who are on different boards, right? And that actually can mean, it can mean something, right? Or they're on the, um, you know, presidential can um, cabinet, right? and then they're on some international board of some sort. And there is, there is some sharing of knowledge that's happening with that. So that's a very useful, that's a, it's a little harder to think about in some ways, but it's a really powerful um, way to, to visualize those connections. So there is a social network of boards, or a social network, you know, if you like, of movies, or a social network of classes, like which classes are connected to each other. Oh. The lifting, lifting. They're doing these things. All right, so that's good. I like it. It's really good. I mean, this is really fun. I mean, this is because I mean, it's just it's just all over the place. It's really such a great thing. So you know, we don't start with a network. We start with this framing, and and, and that. You look slightly disgusted. Are no. you? <laughs> just so you know, my experience. Oh, I see. Yeah, so that's a different food time. Okay, so um, 
Um, these are just incredible. It's mesquite, but a lot of salt. So that could be what you need. But I know it's. Yeah. Yeah. You, you didn't. You can try some of these. Yeah, exploding is bad, so don't do that. There's obviously just an enormous block of chocolate. So. Um, I'm sure yeah. Yeah, what could go wrong? Um, <coughs> really good. That's exciting. That's really exciting. Uh, so that's a different thing, I think. Yep. Graphically, maybe, yeah. But it's a bit of a different thing. This is, you know, these are, these are fundamentally two different kinds, you know, different types of objects. They're the same across here, whatever these are. These are individuals and these are, you know, maybe, as I said, classes is a good example, right? And, and so you can think about these, right? So we add another connection here. So E suddenly starts to take up parasailing or whatever it is. And, and now they're, they've got an extra, now they know B, right? So they didn't know B before, now they're in context three with B and also D as well. So the dynamics of this thing could be explored. We'll, we'll look at this in a couple of different ways, I suppose, later on. They will come back. Um, but just to really, I mean, it's just the right, it's just how it works, you know. So the question is then, you know, what can you do with this uh, observation? Well, let's make, a, again, a stylized model, but we're lifting away from that first ring type one, right? That simple ring type one that uh, Watson Strogatz made, which you know, made it, gave all this insight. And then the uh, Kleinberg model as well. Again, all this extra insight. Here we're going to make something that looks a little more social. <laughs> um, yeah, on your uh, things at the end of the end of the school year, I never think about it, but I'm thinking about it now. All you have to write is, he gave us chocolate. It's great. Okay. <laughs> Although there is this fear, it's like, you know, you stop feeding the bears and it kind of goes bad, so. <laughs> I, I know I'm, <laughs> if I make a terrible mistake and do not bring food. Um, okay, so, I could get in trouble. Let's see, so, okay, so what do we do? We're going to complicate this, of course, a little bit, but let's say we have, we have different kinds of context that we go into, right? Or w that we belong to, and so we can think about them pretty... In, in broad groups, so occupation, for example. So, and then they have a taxonomy, and this is where we're going to get distance from. So, occupation. People have occupations, right? They have something. Generally speaking, they have something. They have there's some attribute for them, in, even if it's unemployed, right? It's they have an occupation attribute. So, it might be that they're in education, and then they're specifically a high school teacher or a kindergarten teacher or, a, um, God forbid, a professor of some sort. And then healthcare is another thing, nurses, doctors, you know, all sorts of characters in here. So, you know, these people seem closer, perceptually, right? They're closer than a doctor and a kindergarten teacher. They're just closer. I mean, they have occupations, which puts them together. They're humans, puts them together. But there's a sense here that they're further, right? What we're trying to get out of this is a sense that they're closer or further away. So we build a hierarchy on top. And for our model, we'll just use hierarchies. But you can imagine, and I'll give you examples of thinking, these are different kinds of spaces, potentially. But again, A, B, C, D, E, they're connected through this. Um, and so B and A are close to each other because they're both high school teachers. You know, and then if they share other attributes, like living in the same place, teaching the same kind of classes, you know, those things add. And if they like rock climbing, you know, they start to become... So if they match up more and more on all these other kinds of dimensions, so we'll call this one dimension, all right? Then we'll have to think about distance. So here's a very simple notion of what distance might mean. And we'll see this again when we go to contagion. Uh, so the distance xij, so it's going to be the height of the lowest common ancestor in the, in the hierarchy, right? So we're going to have groups now. So all these people are, uh, let's see, the way I did it was, yeah. We'll, we'll say that anyone who's in the same group is a distance one apart, right? Your distance zero to yourself, let's say. So if you're in the same group, you have a distance one. If you're in a group that's adjacent on the hierarchy, distance two, so it's one plus the height of the lowest common ancestor in the tree. So for example, we have I and J. So where's I and J? So I and J are here, so there's a distance one, two, three to get to them. So nothing out of control, nothing too crazy. Is that okay? Right? So this is a very simple distance thing. Uh, you know, and it is about categorization taxonomies that, the, that a particular attribute of people could be broken down in this way. XIV over here. 
guess it's a V, um, is four, because there's, there's a one, a two, a three, four, to get to them. So they're, they're the furthest they can be away in this, in this little categorization of people. So is that okay? So this is one. So this might be, a, this might be occupation, right? Um, <coughs> all right, now we're going to add one more piece to it. So this is, again, this is like the Kleinberg approach. Uh, now we have, it's not, we don't have, so we don't have a, you know, an, um, a cube or some sort of space we're actually adding links to. We've got a taxonomy. And so the closer people are in a hierarchy, then the more likely they are to know each other. So we'll do a similar sort of thing. So it's going to be the probability that I and J know each other will be proportional to an exponential decay. Uh, you know, we'll have some little tunable parameter here in the distance between them. So a bit different to Kleinberg, <coughs> who had a, uh, Euclidean spaces and then parallel decays. We have these hierarchies with exponential decays. Right, so it's a tunable thing again. So we can have alpha equals zero. So this is just, right, this is just a constant. So it doesn't matter what i and j are, it doesn't matter how far apart they are, that's just random connections. Right, alpha equals zero makes this e to the one, it makes this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll just throw the links everywhere. So that's turning off any um, heat of the, of the actual structure. And when alpha is large, then we've got, we have lots of local connections, right? So you need to be, this is going to decay very rapidly. And so we'll, we'll be ramified, we'll be connecting people within groups. So the groups don't have any connections to start with, right? Right, for example, no one's connected in this. No one's connected at all in this situation. Now we're going to add links. And when alpha equals zero, we'll just essentially strip all this away and just randomly choose nodes and connect them. When alpha is very large, uh, we're going to bias towards nodes that are close to each other in the hierarchy, <coughs> and we'll be starting to fill in the groups, connecting the groups, and so on. Actually, I guess we, what we do is we say the groups all know each other. That's true. All right, okay, fine. Yeah. So, generalized affiliation networks, one more step. So now we have these different dimensions. So we could say geography can be split up in this way, which is, this is a bit funny because geography is sort of weird 2D thing, but, you know, I'm just going to say it's a bit like this. Occupation. You know, something like age, yes, well, there's a spectrum there, and it's clear it's sort of a 1D thing, but it might be more clumped. You know, you're in middle school together, you're in suffering in college together, you know. So, you, you know, you're in your 50s or your 60s or something like that. There might be broader pieces. So this might not be just some one-dimensional thing, but more kind of blocks. All right, fine. Uh, I'll get you a little bit later on. We'll get to a little bit later on where we actually look at what some of these um, spaces are like. So, lots of uh, stuff to appeal to. I mean, these, this is older work, Simul. This is from 1900. Uh, talking about, uh, so Google Circles, right? Google Plus. Good old Google Plus, which is just <laughs> killing it out there. Um, but, th you know, their structure is great. I mean, it's great. It's really nice, and they're a nice thing, but no one, no one goes there. Um, but they, they, were very, they, they, they build off all these stories, right? They build off what sociologists have been saying, I mean, and actual normal humans. You know. So um, that you have these different groups you work with. I mean, we know this, but they manifest it, they allowed it to happen. So in principle, great, but yeah. Facebook, oh my God. Um, okay. <coughs> okay, so what's going to happen now is we'll say, right, so here's an example. So we're going to say, let's have three dimensions, which could be what we had before. We, and we're going to stick to hierarchies. And they'll all be the same hierarchy, right, the same height. So in this case, the, um, uh, the height of this hierarchy, right, is one, two, three, with these groups of size, in this case, I guess they're all the same, aren't they? Groups of size six, so we have some population base. So this is, say, you can think of occupation. Um, uh, this is where you live, and, you know, this is maybe, you know, the sports you play or something like this, right? So there, there are these different dimensions to your uh, identity. And so th they're arrayed. So I is in this category here. And obviously, we've simplified things to pieces. But which are, I is in this category here, here, and here. Uh, but J is over here. And it's closer to I in these two um, in over here. But it's also it's in the same group as um, I here, right? So they have very different occupations. They live somewhat near each other. And they both um, like to hunt snakes in the, um, in the hills. OK. It's an Australian pastime. Okay, so let's see. <coughs> They're all really poisonous. Okay, so uh, we'll write down a little vector for their identities, right? And we'll just number across here. So, so which groups they're in. So 
Uh, i is in one, one, and one. So that becomes this little, yeah, let's make a little vector for it. And eight, four, one, right? So it's in group eight, group four, and then group one. And then you need a little thing that tells you how far apart those groups are. It's a hierarchy. Um, so the distance between i and j in the first dimension is four, because there's a one here, two, three, four. Uh, the distance between them over here is three, right? So next level down. And then the distance between them here, the way we've defined it, is that it's one. They're in the same group. So we have these distances in their, in their dimensions. And then we'll say the social, this is an extreme thing, the social dimension, the uh, social distance between them is, um, is the minimum of those. Very extreme. Um, but, so in this case, it'll be one. So we'll say that they're actually close. Uh, and then, you know, to build this, to, to kind of play around with it, what we'll do is we'll uh, have different numbers of, numbers of hierarchies, different depths and so on, right? You can do that. Different branching numbers. These are branching ratios of two, but you get branching ratios of three, four, five to create your hierarchies. Two is actually a little extreme and things kind of uh, don't work out so well there. Um, but once you move away from that, it doesn't matter too much. So the exact kind of taxonomy doesn't matter too much. Branching ratio is three, four, five, six, right? Doesn't matter if, right? So each, this is how many, how many, you know, how many, so th if this was healthcare, I mean, how many different parts of healthcare are underneath it? So in this, you know, we're saying two, which is obviously not right. But you could break it into 10 things and then another 10 things, and yeah. And obviously this is very uneven. I mean, look at, say, university structure, right? So different college, so there are the colleges, so you have that you have the university and then colleges, and then the colleges have partition, the partition sometimes in the schools, but departments as well. And some colleges have many, many, <coughs> many things. College of Arts and Sciences is huge. Um, <coughs> you know, and then you have different sizes. So all those things are true. All these things are true, different sizes. But we'll do this extreme thing. Um, so this is something that's been noted, actually, by sociologists. But, you know, this model at least reproduces a real thing, which is that... Uh, um, Triangle inequalities doesn't work for social networks, right? for social distances. It doesn't, at least in a, um, and certainly in an intuitive sense, right? So you know someone um, uh, because you go to college with them and they play basketball with someone else who's a lawyer. But you don't know that. You have no connection to that person, right? So the distance between you and your friend is close. The distance between them and their friend is close. The distance between you and that, your friend's friend, is, is large, right? Right, triangle inequality. So, um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, let's get rid of that. Well, it's just a, it, m most spaces have this, right? So it's, easy, it's, it's quicker to get from I to K than it is to go through J, right? Triangle inequality. Yeah, this is for, th this distance is further than this distance. Uh, but you can have, and so here's the example here. So, um, I, um, so let's say J and K play basketball together. I like scuba diving and um, or underwater hockey. Let's do that. J, K, they, uh, they play basketball. So they, they're close. They know each other through that venue. There's no connection between them here. And um, I and J, you know, I go to college. They're in the same program. So they know each other. Uh, but K is in something <coughs> completely different, right? They're an undertaker, shall we say. All right, so they have a different, different job. All right. So I doesn't I is not close at all to K. So this distance is really much bigger than traveling this way, right? So if you want to go from I to K, you use this connection, very small, and then you use this connection. They're both very small, right? Right. Yeah. And it's more than just that they're farther, you know, that, that, that I is a long way away from K. Like you go one more step, three, to, you know, this is two degrees of separation, three, four, you really have nothing in common with someone who's four, five, six degrees of separation. I guess it's not super surprising because you're not working in the, in the metrics field. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it makes... I mean, just the explanation I get. I mean, it makes sense. You can just say it. But to then um, create something that has that as a property that's, you know, we can write down, that's, a, that was, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, so it is completely intuitive. So this is a problem with a lot of sociological stuff. There's all sorts of things that make sense. Um, and people will often, so this is one of the battles you have, is you, you, know, you produce something new, a contribution, you'll get, this is trivial and obvious, blah, blah, blah. 
And then you'll get another bunch of people saying, this is just completely wrong, right? So it's sort of, it's an odd world to be in because people have these senses of how things work. We'll, we'll talk more about strange social behavior later, but um, where our narratives basically kind of break down, especially when you have lots of people interacting. Okay, so that's good, that's a good thing. All right, so let's, let's do this. Wow, talking. Um, so we're gonna have the same story again. People know themselves, hopefully to some extent, at least they know what they do. They probably don't know themselves truly. Um, they know what their friends do and they know what the target does, right? This is kind of functional identity story, right? But they're interested in various things. Um, so now we have a game where uh, an individual can estimate, they can, <coughs> they can say, okay, my friends have these attributes, they live in these different dimensions at these different locations, like 111 and 148. They have a vector, right? They have a vector representation of everyone around them and then they have a vector representation of the target and they can just make a simple estimate of who's closest. Yeah. Um, and we, we'll use a greedy algorithm, just go to your friend who has the, who's closest. Yeah. So here's one result. Uh, so we're going to compare two, if you remember, so alpha equals zero means random, wire, rewire, random wires being added, so just a random network essentially. And alpha equals two, means local structure. So you're connecting to people who are similar to you in your hierarchy. Now, um, this is, so what happens is, uh, and this is the number of hierarchies. So 15 hierarchies, this is a quite a lot of dimensions. They're all equally weighted, which is probably not, which is not right because you know, your geography and work and those things matter more. Um, but at least in this model, that's how they were done. Uh, let's see, so we're interested in in this probably of succeeding, right? So Q is probably that a, a mess, so very much like the Milgram experiment and the experiment we ran, what's well probably that a message gets through, given that it has some failure rate. Um, yes, right, good. And um, <coughs> let's see, so what happens is if you have the random, people being randomly connected, then for one dimension, so there's just one dimension, that actually is pretty good because the problem there is uh, you've got some hierarchy, and then you're just going to randomly connect everyone to each, to each other. That's the uh, alpha equals zero case. And then the random, the, the one where we have alpha equals two, you're, you're actually connecting more locally, right? So people are being connected more locally. But the problem is then they don't have long connections. They don't have a way of <coughs> moving, right? There'll be no connection across here. So this one gets some benefit here because it has the, you know, it can really jump a long way. It's not social because it's got random connect it's just random connections. So for one hierarchy, that one performs the best. Right? This is probably that gets through. Um, but as soon as you add more hierarchies, and you, again you're just randomly wiring them up, it doesn't do as well because now you now you've got more hierarchies, you've more places to choose from. You know, my friends have more <coughs> attributes that I can connect to the target. And eventually you have this problem that you know if you have hundred attributes, or in this case, you know, even just fifteen, you have a lot of attributes that you consider all to be equally important and then you compare it to the target person, they're, they're all gonna start to match up in at least one of them. So your ability to navigate goes away. So this in some ways shows that having a few attributes that you concentrate on is good. So this is, D, this is two attributes, three attributes, four, which is to say two hierarchies, three hierarchies, four. Um, so as soon as you go to two hierarchies, now this one, let me try to explain this. Now, this game is different because we've got a second hierarchy, so this is work and um, where you live, and that's gonna have that same reinforcing, so very natural, so you are connected to people you work with, um, and so on, uh, and you're, you're connected to people that you live near. What we did in this model is we shuffled locations, so, so your, your, your I, you appear here in this case, you appear here in this case, so you're randomly shuffled between these two hierarchies, and you're randomly shuffled across all the hierarchies. So that's, a, that's, again, a very big kind of step. But it means you're connected to people locally here, connected to people locally here, so you can move between those two hierarchies, those two attributes. And so this becomes the most navigable one. Eventually it decays again because you're sort of equally waiting way too many options. Um, yeah, so this was a success. We did something even more outlandish with, with this, was we said, all right, well, let's kind of try to get what Milgram had. So at that time, 100 million people, roughly, for the US's population. <coughs> um, 
there are estimates of how many friends people have, and, and at that time, 300 was this quite, um, you know, done in various ways by sociologists. 300 was a, was a number. It's certainly, you sometimes you'll see 1,000. Depends on how people do this. People go out of their way to try and do this. You'll see it on Facebook. Um, you'll see estimates of how many friends you really, really have, like really close friends, and that's more like, you know, under 10. Um, <coughs> but I can, I can link to this. Group sizes of 100. You know, this is somewhat arbitrary, but this is a Dunbar number story, okay? So actually, that's not complete. That's a Dunbar number. So 150 is this, so it's Robin Dunbar as an anthropologist. This is this notion of actually, like, what cognitively what we can handle in terms of friendships. Or in terms of, say, group sizes, right? We, we can't remember names after that, that many. Like, if you spend a couple of years in a... A school or something, and you have 150 kids in your grade, you'll, you'll know them probably. But if you have a thousand, it's not going to work out, right? Uh, and so Dunbar's number is then there's estimates for that for all species, right? And then there's a scaling story once again um, because you have, say, you know, whales have, a, have a, you know, their immediate family and then they have a pod size, right? And you can talk about how they have associations with these different groups that actually go, go up in size in a scaling kind of way. So these are, there are a couple of things in here. So B equals 10, so that's a branching ratio of the hierarchies. So right, we, I kept showing you branching ratios of two because three is hard. Uh, 10, so that's pretty big, but it turns out this doesn't matter too much at all. Um, and and this, this, of course, dictates the depth of the hierarchy because it's 10, right? So it's depth of eight, um, or seven. Uh, alpha equals one, so a little bit further away, right? So alpha equals two was a tighter local connection thing. Alpha equals one is a little looser. And two, just two attributes that you have to, to search through. And so as this was done, the average um, path length for the model was 6.7, <coughs> for the data was 6.5, using, again, that... Um, I mean, this just does seem like complete... Um, Trickery, but you know we've these are these are not tuned numbers. You know, I mean, we could have played around with this to get exactly the same thing, and that would be super wrong. So um, these are roughly kind of in the right order of things. We showed that this didn't matter too much by opening up and closing it, um, the hierarchies, and yeah. So so this was and so all right. There's these are the successful. These are the lengths of the successful chains. If you take the People who started in Nebraska and trying to get to the person <coughs> in Boston. So if we take out the Boston group, which is about 100 people, there are 200 people trying to send letters to the person in Boston. So that's getting more to the scale of the US because the Boston was a little small. So, so you know, we even did a Kolmogorov Smirnoff test, to, which is an alcohol-based thing, um, to, to see uh, if these distributions were not unreasonable. So. Yeah, that's, that's a ridiculous success. You shouldn't be able to do that. All right, so, okay. It does, it does hit. Really wrong. Okay, la ladder Adamic again. Um, I really always did say Adamic, but it's Adamic. So um, she was at HP Labs, and they said, oh, right, let's have a look around, because we want to go back to this, you know, these hierarchy things that we just kind of made up, taxonomies, they were okay. Um, <coughs> showed that... Uh, if you have the organizational chart of people, <coughs> and this is, again, for HP Labs, then the, the probably of being connected to people, having these extra connections. So you're connected, of course, to the people immediately above you and so on, right, and below you in the organizational chart. But, you know, you have these other connections. So where do those extra connections fit? And what's the distribution? Um, what's the... What's the um, if you use the... Uh, distance in the organizational chart, right? That's your measure. What's the lowest common ancestor um, distance? You get an exponential distribution there. So that's, that's well fit by that. So that, that fits this crazy thing we made up. Uh, it's different. It was different for distance. They also looked <coughs> at where people sat and what's the probably that they knew someone as a function of their distance away from them. And that went, that, so this is more of an algebraic thing. So one over up. Which is pretty cool. Okay. Anyway, so you know, it's more it's more complicated. As I said, you know, if you if you put age in there as an important thing, if if you felt if that was really an important part of how people navigate, um, I mean, it's really work and location are the main things. Okay. So you know, real world uses we've of course seen other things. Um, 
but it's not just about this kind of fun game of navigating around, right? So, you, so once you've got identities for objects, and of course they're just manifested for people, but we've done this for other objects, you know, with tagging and so on. Um, because so much is online, the actual object itself is its own metadata, you know, like you, it's, it's all, all the information is in it. And photos, you know, I mean, early on, early on Google was terrible, right? For, for its image search thing was okay, but if you put in Apple, it, it might have anything that had Apple in the name of the JPEG, right? Which could go horribly wrong. Um, and it just wouldn't look good, you know, it wouldn't look good. But Flickr was really good, right? Early on it was very good, because you'd say, I want a, you know, red flowers, and it'd be just a whole bunch of red flowers, because people had tagged red and flowers, and a lot of people had done that. Um, so, <coughs> folksonomy, this is a name that kind of evaporated, but that was the idea of, you know, taxonomy coming from people. Um, you know, it makes things navigable, findable, uh, and searchable. So, and there are efforts to do this in organizations. How do you lift the knowledge of someone out into a place that can be, you know, without causing egregious harm to them or annoying them or something like that? You know, people have a lot of knowledge, right, that put together in certain ways um, could help <coughs> you solve all sorts of problems. So, how do, you, how do you do that? I mean, we're good at kind of trying to find that ourselves, but how could you, I'm not going to use the word, but how do you make, how do you make that work better? Recommender systems, um, yeah, and you always have this battle between average people doing things and, and expert judgments. All right, so the nutshell is um, plain networks, they're not searchable. Um, if you understand how the network is formed, right, so this is you understand why these links are there, that people are connected because of their identities and so on, how it goes back and forth. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a better kind of social network model. You can imagine all sorts of variations on this that you could perform. Just the, just the basic um, bipartite affiliation thing is very powerful. Uh, so there, there was, for example, early on there were some sort of mysteries of how to make a network that had the kind of clustering that you might see in a social network. Well, those things are much easier to make if you have context because you know, in the context there's a lot of strong connecting. But if you're sort of, for some reason, just trying to link th nodes up in certain ways, you're not, it's not going to work out. Um, peer to peer networks, da -da 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 -da, all sorts of things. Okay, okay, so there's actually a, um, the next piece is um, <laughs> uh, scale free networks, and we'll, do, we'll start that on, on Tuesday, but let's see if we can watch a, a complete like, brain cleansing video, which I'm sure you've seen, but it's pretty great. I don't think it will run on this, yeah, right. Because they want us to watch the ad. Okay, buddies. Bye. We've, I've already primed. Oh. <laughs> Så här då. Ja. Nu är jag jävla spänd på om jag lockar igen nog mer än. Let me just get that. The audio is very important. Okay, so what's going on? Uh, so what's going on? This guy has been trekking around the, the South Pole, um, Antarctica with the penguins. If you're in for penguins. And, uh, has left a cache of food. I mean, all along the way, has left caches of food. But this particular one, he doesn't know what's in it. He didn't write, he didn't write what was in it, so he has no record, and his brain's gone, you know, because it's been months or whatever, so he can't remember. So. Oh. So. Sarah. Uh, he's Norwegian. Oh yeah. Let's get him. I locked in two more. Bare, bare grunnreasjon, da, som det var noe annet som kan spise seg. Åh, oh, tenk om jeg hadde lagt igjen noe godteri. Det hadde vært toppers. Her er noe godteri her! Jeg tror ikke det er noe. Men det er alltid lov å håpe. Vi stikker enda mer vaselin, det har jeg for så vidt ikke bruk for. Sinksalve, vi kaller det i laget igjen. Det er ganske mye her, altså. Det var tydeligvis bra. Ja! 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 Virkelig? Hæ? La jeg igjen det? Hahaha! Ja! Det 
Dad! Doppelpuss, the cheese noodles! Yeah! Cheese noodles, right? Cheese noodles, yeah. No, we do cheese Yeah! Yeah, she's a little. Resten er vel bare søppel. Ja. Det er ikke stra skje. Jeg har pumpet til primus, så jeg har hatt to stykker av likevel. Ekstra trakt, som jeg ikke hadde noe. Ekstra tekt av... It's not the same thing. It should be good if it was the same package. Yeah, I'm sure we'll go up and think to have tried to spare away. That's not possible. Hey! Oh, 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 oh,